All right. Good afternoon, and uh, welcome back to the Graph Guy. I'm Clark Ritchie, uh, and I'm the Graph Guy. Uh, so, a couple of housekeeping things, uh, as always. Um, as you saw on our initial page, and you'll see again in a moment, really uh, looking to, to get some more followers. Need some help uh, with that? Uh, so please, please uh, follow uh, if, you, if you can. Uh, put the word out there as uh, well. A uh, reasonably high chance as well of uh, dog activity today. Still no doggy cam. Puppy cam is still down due to technical issues. Um, maybe get us, uh, help me get some more followers and maybe we can afford to get a, a new cam for, for puppy cam. Get the puppies back on the camera. Um, but we're going to need some support for that. So uh, today uh, I'm going to be uh, going over uh, a, an informal uh, off the cuff look at some of the top ranked database uh, graph database engines out there. Uh, in the past, we've uh, gone over sort of my criteria that I usually like to apply when evaluating databases. Um, and we'll mix that into here as well and kind of see what's out there and what's happening in the graph database space right now. Uh, so uh, with that, let's cut right over uh, to that. So uh, here we are on dbengines.com. So if you're not familiar with this, this is a, a great uh, site to kind of see what's happening in the database world. Um, they, they rank essentially uh, database popularity and they update it every month. So if we go here to the ranking, we can see all of the rankings uh, they have. There's, there's a quite extensive list. You can, of course, sort and filter the list. You can see the current month's rank and where they were the previous two months. And then, of course, uh, what sort of a change uh, they may have occurred. So, you know, they went up a spot or they went down a spot. Uh, they also tell you about the database model, uh, give you some actual scores and, and so forth. If you want to know how this is done, they actually expose the method for you. So we can see that they look at uh, the number of mentions on a website using Google and Bing. Uh, they use Google Trends to measure interest. They look at Stack Overflow as well as the DBA Stack Exchange. Uh, they're looking at job offers uh, that mention that particular technology. Uh, they're actually looking at LinkedIn to see how many people are talking about having this as a skill uh, and Twitter tweets that are mentioned in the system as well. And then they kind of calculate this and, and apply a score to it. So it's a pretty good overview. Of, of again, what is popular, not necessarily what is good, because as we know, uh, popular does not always mean good, but it's a great place to start if you want to see sort of what is the state of the space, are there things out there that I should be looking at that maybe I'm not aware of. So uh, we'll go back to the ranking page, uh, and we can filter based on the type of database we're interested in if we want. And so, of course, today we're interested in graph databases. Uh, I can say I want to include secondary database models, and you'll see here, so something like multi-model, but really secondarily are, are graphs like SAP HANA. Uh, I don't want that. I want things really that uh, are, are strongly graph-oriented. So uh, full disclosure, uh, I am going to talk briefly, but not extensively, about Neo4j, as well as down here, MemGraph. Uh, reason being, um, Surprise, I know with 10 followers, you think this pays the bills, uh, but it doesn't. So I do have uh, a day job. And uh, in that day job, uh, uh, my company does have a professional relationship with both Neo4j and MemGraph. So I'm going to talk about them a little bit, uh, but not extensively, uh, because I do have a, a relationship there, and that wouldn't be a, a fully fair and unbiased opinion. So uh, let's get right into it. This may run a little long because this is a huge list. I, we will definitely not go through all of it, um, but it's a, it's a fascinating thing to do. I have to do this periodically, and I haven't done it in a little while. So uh, I really want to uh, get into it. Oh, thank you for a new follow. That is awesome. Really appreciate the follow. Uh, so Neo4j. And so this little plus here, two decks, any of them indicate that you get detailed vendor information about it. So if I click over here, I see the information about Neo4j. And again, this is provided by the vendor. Uh, Neo4j has been the leader uh, on this for a very long period of time. 
Uh, their founder and CEO, Emil Ephraim, uh, actually invented the property graph technology. Uh, so they are the leader in the space. They are thought leaders. They are by far the largest company in this space in terms of the footprint in the community. Um, uh, I obviously use them extensively. You, you've seen them here in my show a number of times. Um, they are absolutely the, the front runner. Um, awesome. Another follow. Thank you. Much appreciated. Um, so that's, you know, that's Neophagenic. And you can see by their score, um, these top two, in particular, Neo4j and the Microsoft, they're way out in front of the others uh, in terms of their overall score. Uh, it, it's not even close. And Neo's got a significant lead over Microsoft's uh, Azure Cosmos DB. So let's look at Azure. Uh, let's see what information they give us here. So uh, it is multi-model, right? So it's not natively a graph database. Uh, it's a document store. They have graph. They have key value. They've got column. Uh, they do some spatial information. Um, we can see how they're ranked in terms of other uh, those other stores as well. Uh, and of course, we see it's, it's obviously it's commercial. It's from Microsoft. Uh, this is cloud only. So that's interesting, right? If I don't want to go cloud, uh, this this would be a drawback for me. Or if I don't want to go Azure, right? This is only going to be available on Microsoft's uh, Azure uh, cloud system. Uh, schema free. Uh, a variety of APIs. So they've got their own sort of document DB API, I can see. Uh, they've got a Gremlin API. So if you were with me the last couple of weeks, we talked briefly about Gremlin as being one of the two main popular languages at the moment for querying uh, a graph database. And they've also got some RESTful and they, they apparently use the MongoDB API probably for their uh, document uh, store or the key value store rather. They support a variety of different languages. So C Sharp, .NET, Java, JavaScript. So that's great. Uh, it's going to be easily accessible for me in terms of languages. Um, they've got partitioning, uh, triggers. OK, so this is, this is looking interesting. Again, uh, acid transactions. So let me, let me go uh, and go to their website and pop that open. Now, I know a little bit about Azure. I've looked at it in the past, uh, played with it a bit about Played with it a bit in terms of their Cosmos DB. So one of the things uh, I know that I don't know if we'll see here. Uh, I know Microsoft actually runs its uh, Xbox uh, network worldwide on Cosmos DB. So right away, you know that tells me okay, the database itself obviously scales. Um, now the Xbox network is not a, using their graph base, so I don't know about that. But the underlying technology, I know that scales. Uh, so we can see here, let's make this a little bigger for everyone. Uh, they're guaranteeing single-digit response times, dynamics and availability. Sure. Uh, let's go right into the features. Uh, right, so I'm seeing a lot of vendors speak, right? Guaranteed speeds. I don't, I don't really care about that. I want to know specifically about their graph. So, of course, it's, it's Microsoft. So there's a lot of information here, which is both good and bad. It's good because... It's there, it's bad because it's getting a little difficult for me to find out what I want. So let's go to documentation. And of course, what I'm really interested in is, uh, so tutorials and labs, uh, Gremlin. So Gremlin is the uh, language they're going to use for um, talking uh, to the graph. So I'm going to hop over there. So right off the bat, I like the fact that there are tutorials here and using it in, in Gremlin. Um, if I like Visual Studio, I see this Visual Studio integration, so that's good tooling. I, I like that. Um, you've got to go out to the to the app, of course, uh, out to the to the Azure portal, and here's if Magic getting it set up. Okay, that looks you know, that looks reasonable. It's a few steps, but that's that's fine. I can I can do that. Um, and so they give me some code too. Here's code in C sharp. Um, can I change the language? No, it's just going to be C sharp for right now. Okay, well that's Hold on, I like to, I'm over Java guy. Let me see if I can pop over and see it in Java. I can, so that's great. I guess I can see in a number of different languages. So I like that again. So the accessibility, I'm, I'm giving it good sort of marks in my head for accessibility from the API side. Um, again, here's setting up. Here I am in some uh, some Java uh, uh, APIs. Uh, I'm, I'm 
building a connection for cluster. So I've got some sort of a, a YAML file for configuration. That seems reasonable enough. Um, code's pretty simple. Okay, so this is this is like a good start. Um, I like that. I really though want to know more about uh, the overall um, information in terms of its um, graph, and I'm not immediately seeing this. I look at this document. I go to concepts and so on. I'm not seeing them talking about graph yet. Um, so I don't I don't love that. It's telling me that it's definitely multi-model and they're not really leading with graph. So that makes me a little nervous if if the number one thing I care about is graph. If I really care about multi-model, uh, I'm not mo not bothered by that so much, but I'm mentioning graph and so right, they're talking about SQL first, then they're talking about Mongo, Cassandra, finally down here then to Gremlin. So again, uh, Tinker Pop. Um, I've got the Gremlin protocol. Yeah, again, I'm still not seeing a lot about how this works under the covers. So I'm going to peek around a little bit more because I really want to understand a bit more about what they're doing with the graph. How are they dealing with this? Um, again, yeah, I know it's used all over the globe. Um, so, uh, you know, I've got a lot of the graphs to look at. So at this point, um, you know, I'm putting this in my sort of my, if I'm interested in multi-model, maybe, uh, list, I would definitely look at this if I'm available to go in, in the cloud. But it's definitely not graph first. It's sort of and graph, um, which, is, which is fine, but it's, it's not my premier choice. It's a vendor that I know well. Uh, you know, say what you will about, about Microsoft. I know they're not going away. I know they've got support. There's clearly documentation. So those things are all good. Uh, it's, it's been out there for a while, so it, it definitely works to some degree. So, you know, it's interesting. Um, let's look at what's next. So side note, of course, um, if you've used any of these databases for graph or others, uh, and, and, and you, you, you think I'm giving your favorite database an unfair shake or I'm missing something interesting, Definitely, at me. Let me know. I, I want to hear from everybody. Um, this is a very casual, informal, uh, off-the-cuff me going through this list and just sort of thinking out loud with everyone based on my experience and graph. So we have next is a RangoDB. They've been around a while, actually. Let's see what uh, vendor information they have. So uh, they're claiming native multi-model. It's so, okay. Um, they do seem to list graph at least pretty early on. One query language, okay, that, that could be easier. Um, they are doing other things. Uh, they've been around, yes, it's 2012, so yeah, it's been around for a while, like I thought. Um, it's in C++. This is interesting to me because um, whenever I'm dealing with a technology that, that has to do with a lot of data, I get a bit nervous when the underlying technology is using a memory-managed platform like Java. Uh, because of garbage collection, right? Um, those of you who are developers and, and work in these platforms uh, probably know what I'm talking about, but you know, long story short, uh, on a memory managed platform like Java, uh, .NET, uh, as a developer, you get some nice shortcuts. You don't have to deal with uh, memory allocation on your own. Uh, this, the underlying platform does that for you. So that's the good news, but the bad news is when you have a lot of data too, uh, the platform will occasionally uh, essentially stop the world and, and pause all things that are running to collect and clean up all that memory. And that can be really problematic when dealing with uh, things that require high responsiveness and lots of data. So um, I, I liked seeing a non-memory managed platform like C++. That makes me happy. Um, we've got a bunch of different APIs here. So again, I see Gremlin, uh, GraphQL. So um, you know, that's popular right now. Uh, lots of things here that I'm familiar with, you know, some Java and Spring Data, the HTTP. Um, that's great. Lots of support of programming languages. Uh, they're claiming that they have transactions. So, so that's lovely. So let's, let's go out uh, to their database, uh, to their page, rather, and take a look and see what we can see there. So again, they're touting some sort of native store. I'm not quite sure what that means yet, except they're cookies. Uh, so they've got a free course, uh, which sounds good. Uh, yeah, again, a lot of 
Uh, oh my! So okay, this is starting to be annoying. I will tell you right now, these pop-ups are starting to annoy me. About one more of those, and it's a good chance that I'm out. Um, getting lots of clients. Seems to run lots of different platforms. Um, that seems fine. Uh, but I want to know more about it. So okay, here you go. Products. Uh, so I see they've got a community server. So that's open source. That's good. That means I can get a free start at this if I want before I look at the enterprise. So let me peek right in. Um, I'm going to peek right in for some Let's look at that community server product. So they got a white paper. That's fine. I'm not going to, I might go there eventually, uh, but it's definitely not where I'm going to start. I, I want to get a feel for what this is. A okay, native multi model cloud. So it's got some machine learning, Arango ML. That could be interesting if I'm interested in machine language. Um, I'm talking about some metadata uh, storage. Okay. Um, so it looks like the enterprise is where I get more security. Uh, replication and so forth. That that makes sense. I can buy. I can buy that. Um, all right. So let me. Then they want to compare. Ah, so these comparisons are interesting. Um, I do like those. So AQL. That must be their uh, language. Let's peek at that. I'm not familiar with AQL. Um, right. So it's multi-model. I got that. So Cypher, uh, I'm very familiar with Cypher. And if you join me in the last two sessions, we had two sessions talking about uh, Cypher. Um, so yeah, it's a pattern-based matching, like ASCII art classes, because it sounds like it's they know what they're talking about and they're being uh, upfront uh, in the moment. So AQL, it's a multimodal query language. Okay, this could be good or bad, right? My first thought is, if I'm doing document relational and searching graph, this sounds like it could get complicated. So I don't love complicated, but maybe not, maybe not. Uh, so we can do search of multiple things. We can do traversals. Uh, it's declarative. Both from programming languages. So they've got contracts like fours and things. So this is sounding a lot more like a programming language, probably more like Gremlin than uh, a declarative language like uh, Cypher. So again, that could be good or bad. It's a comparison of concepts. That's fine. Um, so interesting enough, so right here, this is interesting to me. So right here, they're sort of showing us um, information with the database and how they manage it. And what this is, shows me right now is under the covers, everything is JSON, right? So they said they're multi-model, uh, and the underlying storage format is JSON. It's not graph. So like, I'm going to go back to Neo because they're the leader. Neo is a native graph database. Everything they store is stored as nodes and edges. And that provides me a big performance boost uh, because there's no uh, there's no disconnect between how I'm reasoning and querying the data and then how it's actually stored. Uh, here there is. So they're doing some translation, clearly, when I want to ask it a graph question versus a JSON question, to translate back and forth from JSON to graph. So the multi-model, it, it's a valid choice. Um, I believe, actually... Uh, um, Cosmos DB is also JSON under the covers, uh, but it's something important to realize. I'm going to take a performance hit there uh, compared to a pure graph database, uh, you know, and if that's something that I really care about. So, great. There's some things I'm not super interested in that. Uh, talk to me a little bit, data models. So, yep, there's in JSON again. So, here they're showing me how they insert stuff in JSON. So um, I, I'm not, I can read this. I understand what they're talking about here. They're, they're, they've got a, a collection of essentially these, um, what are the employee objects it looks like, and they've got keys and names and roles. This is one employee, another, another, and so forth. I, I understand that. Uh, personally, I don't love reading JSON. I know some people do. That's fine. Um, so this is inserting data, and now they're going to show us how to traverse it. There's an overall syntax. Let me actually see the syntax. Okay, so I like this. They're showing me essentially um, uh, the cipher versus there. So in cipher, I would say uh, match employee whose name is Anne, who manages another employee and return that uh, employee's uh, name. Uh, so anyone managed by Anne. So here, let's see, for V in outbound, and I, I'm going to guess V is for using for vertex in an outbound. So it's like the, the label is embedded in this string, employee, 
and then Anne is the name, I guess. Uh, and then manages is a relationship type. I, I see it. I don't. I don't intrend. I. I. I don't feel uh, great about it after that. Just looking at it, this. Like this is a relationship name, but it looks like that, which seems to be a keyword. Here they're embedding labels and strings. I'm a little, I'm a little feeling a little uncomfortable about that, but it doesn't seem crazy. Uh, oh, pattern matching again. So explicitly saying like filter. This looks pretty similar, right? Here it's kind of a JSON structure again. They're kind of putting together uh, an object. Okay. Um, so I mean, it looks it looks reasonable. I don't again. I don't know that I'm loving this, but again, it's the first pass at it. But it looks it looks reasonable. Um, they also think on performance. You know, I'm I'm not even. So they've got a benchmark again. If you were in some other ones, uh, I I don't even care about this benchmark. No one ever publishes a benchmark that shows that they're slower. So and if everyone's benchmarks is they're faster, then none of them mean really anything. The only benchmark I care about is the one that I'm going to run against my use case. Um, so learning. There's a training center. There looks like a lot of documentation. Um, tutorials so I can get right into the graph concepts uh, I like that well, community detection traversal so I mean this this seems interesting to me they've been around for a while uh, they're a C++ base they are multi-model again so I'm gonna take a hit I know that uh, in terms of performance I know they say they're faster you know than others uh, again I don't fully know that I believe that Let's take a quick peek at this graph database capabilities slide right here. Um, there's some of the graph database is, basics. Yep, I know all of that. Um, are they telling me anything interesting about how their graph database is better? Let's see. Um, similar property, but more flexible because they're full of JSON documents, I guess. Um, doing special hash indexes on the attributes from and to. So essentially, instead of having... So here what they're basically saying is one of the reasons they're fast, even though there's JSON, is these from and to attributes that I get inserted as those JSON documents to represent the relationships. I have a special index on to make things fast. Uh, whereas in something, again, that's that's native, uh, like Neo, you'd get more of an index-free adjacency, where, again, uh, that's built into the data structure. This could be similar. Uh, you have to really delve deeply to know and do some testing. Um, but again, I'm still a little uh, weary in that. Okay, I see that this is interesting. I haven't seen that before. This looks like they've got a little bit of a UI too for visualization and playing around with. Let me just peek at that real quick. I think I connected some to some BIs. Um, what's in their enterprise version? Let's see. Uh, replication, so that's great. Do some kind of a sharding. Data center replication. Uh, smart graphs. So I'm, I'm not seeing a lot here about tooling right out of the gate. Um, I'm not, I mean, I saw that one picture, but I don't really know what that's from. Um, again, learning, some more documentation. But I guess this is definitely interesting. So if, if, if I'm okay with multi-model, um, I, I would definitely mention this. Again, here, drives and integrations. Uh, I'm not seeing a lot of tooling. Installation is a high to guide. I like that so if I'm interested in that, how hard is this to actually set up? Um, there's an installer. Love that. Uh, I don't want to have to do a million different things. If I just breeze through this, uh, general pass, automatic upgrades. Good. I like easy, right? If I can uh, get, how quickly can I get this up and running so that I can actually uh, evaluate it? That's important to me. So this seems this seems all pretty reasonable. So. Uh, I don't see much about tooling. I don't see much about, you know, um, in, in terms of any kind of UI for querying the database, whatever. Uh, I'm sure there's probably something there uh, based on that one picture. I'm just not seeing it. I don't, I don't really see anything uh, over here as, as well. Um, but okay, that's not a huge deal necessarily. So this one is interesting to me, I would say, uh, again, in terms of a multi-model database. So let's go back and see what else we've got. Let's do a little sip of coffee. All right. Virtuoso. Uh, they're 
new to me at least and they're interesting so orango's gone up a little bit since they were at three they went to four and back to three so they seem to be hovering around here virtuoso also seems to be hovering a bit uh another multi-model hybrid represented as relational tables and or property graphs it makes me a little nervous a little nervous seeing relational there uh, my experience has been people that try to understore things in an underlying relational table and convert to graph does not really go well because relational as an underlying data store does not support relationships well. But let's see. Let's see what I actually say. They've been around for quite some time. So this becomes interesting to me that I haven't heard about them. I wonder if at some point uh, graph is maybe relatively new and they were living in another space that I wasn't particularly interested in at the time. Uh, they are fully open source. They're probably out with an extended commercial license available. Okay. Hey, another follower. Thank you very much, Wab Dizzy. Some awesome names of, of people on here today. Um, whole bunch of APIs. Um, this list is actually the largest list we've seen yet. Makes me a little nervous out of the gate. Uh, we've got things here from JDBC, which is a SQL API, uh, a SQL connection. Uh, to an RDF connection, that's SQL, more RDF, sure, REST, more REST, SOAP. I'm not, who, who's, are people still doing SOAP? I haven't done SOAP in forever. Sparkle, so lots of RDF stuff. Uh, nothing here, more Sparkle, nothing here that I recognize as a native non-RDF graph query. So maybe they're actually RDF under the hood. And they say, they're saying property graph, but everything I'm seeing here says RDF to me. So uh, I'm a little bit inter interested in that. I suppose they've got some fine uh, based access control from security. So let's take a look. Um, I'm, I'm curious, but uh, slightly hesitant out of the gate uh, uh, on this. Okay, so I, I, I'd be honest, I, I like seeing an overall kind of a market texture picture on what their uh, structure looks like to give me an idea of sort of complexity and what's involved. Um, although I don't, although this really isn't that, I'm going to write this is just sort of saying I've got a thing and it's hyperlink based super keys. Uh, there's so much marketing speak in hyperlink based super keys. Um, it really is turning me off. It, it, it feels so not real. Uh, let's see what they're saying here. Open standards. How many of them have hyperlinks? Well, that's good. 1980s back. Um, I don't know if hyperlinks are going to stay around, but maybe. Uh, for breaking down data silos, we've got more marketing speak. Impede. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not loving the website. Um, is it just me, or is that a weird picture? Um, okay, I can't even look at that. Um, let's look at their features. This is a lot of text, which doesn't tell me anything overall. Okay, so let's look at... Um, they've got a data explorer, so there's a UI, and yet when I go to the data explorer, which must be a UI... I don't see anything that looks like a UI all the way down here. Okay, yeah, at this point, I'm out. Uh, I don't have time. Um, there's a million other things in the world. I haven't heard of you, and nothing I saw there is interesting to me yet. Um, and honestly, this is, I mean, <laughs> I'm not a marketing person, believe me. Uh, you can ask people that I work with. Um, but I think that it just as a, as, a, as a side path, it really highlights the importance of, of, of putting some thought into your web and so on. It might be a really good database, but I, uh, you know, I, I came in looking for something very specific that they say they do. I don't see it. I got overwhelmed with marketing stuff and then stuff that was hard to read, and I'm out. I don't have time. There's plenty of other databases in here. So uh, like OrientDB. I'm, I've definitely heard of OrientDB. They've also been around for a while. Um, they, here we go. Uh, this is actually uh, provided by DBN. This is not provided by Orient DB. So, just important to know. Yeah, they've also been around since 2010, so a while. Orient DB is all open source. It's a Java based system. So, again, I, I, love, I love me some Java, but I get a little worried in terms of scale when I see a memory managed system such as Java. 
Um, they still do support other languages. If you want to go at it from .NET or C Sharp or, or JavaScript, I can do that. So that's good. Um, they say they've got sharding. They say they've got transactions. Okay, so reasonable enough. Again, multi-model document graph key value um, in that order, but that's also um, alphabetical. So we'll um, we will uh, give them the benefit of the doubt on that. Let's go to their site. Um, okay, so um, I, I like this. I see you know, this is some sort of visual graph editor. I've got some sort of UI for querying. I've got a command line console. Great. That gives me some important information right there. Uh, they've got some tooling and some accessibility. Don't know if they're good, but they're there. Um, so I like that. I have some blog posts. Getting started. Okay, I'll come back to getting started. Man of swag. Well, yes, I am. Okay. Um, full documentation, some training certification. Okay, well, let's look at getting started. Um, I have to download it. Let's make it bigger for everyone. There we go. I download it. I extract it. Okay, this is looking... Okay, it's a batch script. So that's a way I can run on Linux or I can run on Windows. Okay. Um, and then I just go... Uh, this. So that sounds easy. Well, I haven't tried it, so we don't know. But it sounds easy. Some free courses. Fine. Um... Doesn't really tell me much though. So let's look at some documentation. Uh, intro. Uh, okay. Bored with that. Let's look at basic concepts. I want to tell me. I want them to tell me more about how they're dealing with the graph. So here we go. Four types: documents, blobs, typically by binary large objects, kind of a relational term. And vertices and edges. Uh, so that's our graph stuff right in here. So to talk to me about vertices and edges. Yep, I, I understand what those are. They're also documents, right? So it's a, it's a document system under the hood. Um, how, do I, how do I query this? How do I query this? So there's a Java API. A Gremlin. So there's a Gremlin API. Okay, that's a graph-based API. Um, that seems all right. There's a Java API. Okay, I like this, a component architecture. Okay, so I write my application. I use, uh, so Tinkerpop, that's the, that's the Gremlin sort of stack with some transformations and so on. Uh, that's on top of their multi-model API. And then they've got some embedded stuff, some remote operations, in-memory model. Okay, I mean, re reasonable enough. Um, so they've got more of a, a JPA, so a Java persistence architecture, like interface, but dealing with things. Uh, I mean, I would use, if I was going to do this, I, I would definitely, and talk to Dren, I would definitely use Tinkerpop, the, the Gremlin API, I get it. It's more standard, um, lots of documentation. Um, I am a little bit interested. What is in performance tuning? Uh, anything interesting? JVM uh, eight is faster than seven. Well, sure. Um, so the for those of you who aren't aware, the current version of Java is sixteen. Uh, eight is actually deprecated and no longer supported uh, fully by Oracle, uh, and they're really touting eight. Makes me a little bit nervous. Um, there are definitely some companies that are in older versions because of the propagation of ado or the adoption of a newer version of Java. But this is really fairly old. So that makes me a little nervous as well. Um, uh, I, I, OrientDB has been around long enough that I, I've heard you know, second, third hand things about it fairly extensively. Um, the biggest thing, so let's do this. If I, if, I'll, I'll just toss out a search a lot of times like this. I'll go Orient. Uh, Orient DB graph performance. I, I could have done this for others, but if I just ask the internet uh, about its performance, yeah, I want to spell it right. Uh, I was kind of want to hear basically like, what are people saying? Is what is this sort of a general finger in the air? What do I see? So random bad, I get a graph performance problems. Okay, I mean whatever. 
Um, people also ask. So shocker, Arango says they're faster. Well, who would have guessed that? Um, so that that's a useless answer, right? Um, much problem. This, interesting. Look, again, this is a, a GitHub off of their own um, site. So let's just take a peek at that real quick. So they seem to be. Uh, so Orient is a. Uh, except it's open source. Um, so let's see. So here's uh, their page. So if it's open source, right? How how much support is it getting? Um, so let's see. Um, got a bunch of projects: Docker, the Docs, the Gremlin, Studio, the Web Tool. So let's look at the the, the database itself. Um, okay, four four point four k stars. That's that's all right. Um, uh, you know, twenty six watchers, twenty thousand commits. The last one was forty three minutes ago. So it's it seems you know uh, pretty active. Uh, so that's good. Um, if we go to the insights again, we can see is six active issues. Uh, you know, we can see, for example, how frequency how frequently people are committing. This will tell me again, like, is this really being actively maintained and added to? And clearly, it is. Right? Uh, there's lots of work happening. So, sort of a big push uh, here uh, that happened. So, um, yeah, definitely interesting. Um, 192 issues. If I search here and search performance, um, you know, I go to said more than 32,000 labels. It's a lot of labels. So, if a label is an entity type, that's a lot of different entity types. Um, if those were nodes, I would I'd be concerned about that. But like that seems like an odd case to me. Uh, maybe someone is not using labels the way they think labels should be used. Um, so again, you know, this is just a finger in the wind. You know, I I I, I Google for them. Five ninety five, they're closed. Eleven open. I'm like okay, you know, everyone's going to have some of those. Seems reasonable. Um, I would say again, based on how long it's been here, its accessibility. You know, I would take a look at it. This makes me nervous. Uh, again, the, the the it being built on Java, um, but I would I would call it a contender. I know we're over our, our usual amount of time. I'm going to go a couple more because. Um, I think this is a, it's a fun topic. Maybe we'll even do a little more later on. Um, and again, if you have to drop out, I understand this always is going to be available uh, on our YouTube channel linked to from our uh, website as well. Uh, GraphDB, they've um, got some vendor information. Also been around for a while. Yeah, developed by OntoText. So OntoText has been around for quite some time. Uh, and yeah, they're into RDF. Uh, they're really big into RDF. Um, I've heard one of my earlier talks. You'll know that I'm not really excited about RDF. Um, I could go on and on, uh, but I'm, I'm really not a I'm not a big believer in RDF. Um, so I I will tell you now. I don't want to do RDF generally speaking. Uh, I will say, are there sometimes cases where doing RDF might have value? Sure, sure, um, but generally speaking, I'm not a huge fan. Um, it's an RDF store. It also is in Java. That makes me nervous. Um, if you're doing RDF, so of course they're going to have yeah, RDF for J. Uh, I don't see Jenna, which is interesting, but I have to imagine that you can use Jenna with it. Jenna being sort of the de facto standard of uh, Java library for dealing with RDF. Um, but honestly, I'm I'm going to just pass because. Uh, I'm not a big RDF guy. Neptune. This is uh, Neptune. Come on. There we go. Uh, Neptune is, is Amazon's... Um, uh, yeah, it's really Am Amazon's base. This is also RDF. I knew that coming in. Uh, it's only cloud-based as well. Um, variety of languages. Good standards right there. Um, but again... Um, uh, it is uh, RDF. It's not really where I want to be right now. Um, they don't tell you. I don't, I don't think I didn't see it. Yep, they're not actually telling you what it's written in, which is interesting, but that's fine. I'm 99% sure it's not 
Java, but I don't know what it actually is. Um, but again, I don't really want to do RDF. If people are interested in, in a longer discussion, again, in, in depth about RDF, uh, hit, hit me up. Hit me up on, on, on Twitter or on the website or somewhere, and we could, we could certainly do that. See, so Janus Graph, they've been around a while. They're a native graph. Wow, it's our first native graph that we've hit since Neo4j. Um, that kind of excites me. Um, they are open source. Uh, they've only been around a little while. So 2017, that's, that's pretty young. They are in Java again. So, okay. Um, Tinkerpop, so Tinkerpop and Gremlin. Much smaller set of uh, supported languages. I mean, they're pretty big ones. Java, Python, Clojure is an interesting choice. Kind of a cool language. Not, not a massive amount of community support yet. A uh, couple different consistency models. So eventual consistency, right, means that in theory, eventually the data will become consistent, but you're not getting essentially atomic uh, guaranteed transactions. Eventual consistency also typically means you might lose data at some point. Um, but then they also have an immediate one, so it looks like there, there's a trade-off in there. So that could be interesting. Uh, let's take a peek. I like the color. Not that that really matters. Um, distributed, open source, net scalable. Uh... Hundreds of billions of vertices. Can I? I don't know. I'll be honest. So hundreds of billions. That's a massive amount. So I have run production graphs with billions of graphs, four to five billion. Not to, now, that's a lot of data. Uh, I'm not saying it's the most data. I just think it's a lot of data. People say hundreds of billions. I, I just, it just It feels a little theoretical to me. Uh, I'd love to them to actually show me a graph with 100 billion in there, um, but that's okay. So elastic and linear scalability. Okay, this is interesting. Data storage. So graph data can be stored in Cassandra or HBase or Bigtable or Berkeley DB or Scala or Scala. I'm not sure you knows that. Um, so what this tells me is Janus Graph is essentially some kind of an engine that provides me a graph interface on top of other databases. Uh, I'm immediately not interested. Why not? Uh, because uh, if any of these things natively did a good job with graph-based data, I just use them. But they don't. So now um, I've got to deal with uh, an engine that's going to, um, yes, give me a way of thinking and reasoning and, and doing stuff with my data as if it were natively graph. But under the covers, um, it's being written to a store that is either you know, columnar or tabular or document-based and then translated back and forth. So I'm going to have to deal with all of the performance hits and challenges of, those under, of representing graph data in those underlying storage formats and then take the hit of the conversion. Now, they probably do a lot of that in memory, uh, hold, hold the graph in memory, but at a certain scale, you just don't have enough memory to hold everything in memory. Uh, you don't. You've got to go back to the store. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really, at this point, I, I'm out already. I don't, I don't want to do this. I don't, I, don't want to, I don't want to play that game, as it were. So, thank you, Janus Graph. But graph guy out. Tiger graph. Let's talk about tiger graph. Tiger graph is relatively new. Yeah, 2017. Um, they've actually gotten a lot of buzz in the community. Uh, they are native, um, and I believe they yeah they 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 came out uh, a couple of years ago out of sort of stealth mode uh, and announced their presence with some pretty big customers and a pretty big round of funding. So that was exciting. Um, so uh, they've got their own query language. That always makes me a little nervous. Um, they support Kafka. That's interesting. RESTful APIs, C++, and Java. Okay. Um, I'm okay with that because I'm primarily in this space. Uh, but it is a pretty small list. Um, they've got acid transactions. I like that. 
So let's take a peek. Okay. Um, what do we see? Start free. I like that. Uh, some videos. It's not my thing. So we've got a studio, Graph Studio. So we've got some sort of GUI uh, that I can use. That's that's good. Um, I can run in the cloud. Uh, I can run it, I guess, locally. Marketing. Blah blah. Uh, all right. So let's let's look at the product itself. Uh, I don't really want to watch a demo right now. Uh, I, I might on my own at some point, but let me let's get an overview, and that seems reasonable. Um, so it's it's fast. Oh yes, go go away, please. Uh, scale out, deep link analytics, visual interface, multi graph, multiple groups sharing the same master database while retaining local control and security. That's a potentially interesting concept for some very specific things. Uh, but I'm still not really seeing... Okay, here we go. What is this? Make this a little bit bigger here. Does this tell me what's actually happening? Uh, so Okay, so data comes in through Spark or files or something. Some ETL. There's Kafka as messaging. Here's their storage engine. So they've got a graph one. So it's all graph. They've discussed an indexing engine. So that makes sense. ID service probably around security. Uh, parallel query processing. I like that. Uh, parallel processing of, of queries makes a lot of sense uh, in a graph if you can pull it off, right? So if you think about it, and you're you're traversing nodes and relationships in a graph. Uh, a lot of those patterns, a lot of those queries, uh, can theoretically run in parallel. Uh, but doing so can be challenging. So if you can do that, that can be a really good performance boost. Uh, they got Visual Design UI. Uh, seems good. So that tooling, uh, user queries, graph algorithms. Okay, I mean, that seems reasonable enough. Um, what else we got? Uh, I don't care about benchmarks. Um, let's look at the developer hub. So getting started, sure. Let's let's take a look at getting started. So how easy is it for me to get started? Uh, I can please stop pinging me, Tiger Graph. Uh, so social test drives, you can demonstrate, uh, not interested. Um, okay. So they're, they're actually going to, uh, allow you to create a schema for your graph. I like that. Um, I'm a big believer in that even on a, not a, a no SQL schema free database that you have to impose your own schema to have some kind of rationality in your world. Um, uh, so I, I like that. Again, a little bit of a, of a nice UI there. That's that's fine. Uh, yeah, I have no desire to click around. Um, what's happening? Uh, data loading. Okay, so this is they've got a, so they've got definitely some tooling. They've got some tooling in this studio. Uh, I can explore. So I, I can I can create a schema. I can load data. I can explore the graph. I can write queries. Let's make it a little bigger. Um, this so this query language looks very much like a programming language. Um, okay. Um, all right, so that's that's the quick start. Let's go back over here and see if I can learn learn some more. I don't really know that much. I don't think I know that much about it at the moment. Um, so can I find out more information in Tiger Graph? Okay, here we go, some Tiger Graph. Tribute to Cloud. How about an overview of the platform? Tell me more about, uh, okay, internal architecture. Love that. Let's make this a little bigger for everyone. Yes, we have cookies. So, okay, claim to be the only first native parallel graph. So it's distributed, graph analytics, local storage, real-time graph updates, parallel computation engine, fast loading. So again, here's a benchmark. If they're claiming this, but... Uh, no idea what's actually happening there, right? So, not super interesting. Fast execution, updates and rest. Again, it's, a, it's whatever. Okay. What are they saying? Okay. Uh, so, it's in C. I like that. 
Um, this is a little more of a deeper dive again into uh, that market texture we kind of got before. So that's fine. Um, you know, I'm not seeing a lot about how it works. Uh, transactions. So they've got consistency, no dirty reads. So again, I'm, I'm liking this. This is talking about acid consistency, consistency of reads and writes, you know, uh, isolation. Uh, okay, so they're using MVCC, so multi-version current concurrency control. Uh, this is a um, this is a, a well-known system uh, for managing uh, states, essentially, uh, of the database. Um, it, it's it's a very uh, it's very well known, very highly thought of. Uh, you can do some really nice things with MVCC. Um, I, I like that. I feel like that's you know, generally a good choice. Let's look at the tutorials and getting started, guys, real quick. So let's do a quick getting started uh, installation guide. Let's just peek at that. I don't like how hard is this to do. Uh, I grab a Tarji zip. I export it. I run a. All right, hang on. I got to run a script. So it looks like, okay, there's some requirements. Uh, that's minimal. Okay, so I have to run this on Linux. Um, uh, I mean, that's uh, in terms of a production environment, fine, whatever. Uh, I'm not natively running Linux for dev. So that's a little bit annoying for me. So if I go back, um, and I see installation again. Let's go back one more, I believe. Okay, Docker. I could use Docker. Sure, I guess. I could use VirtualBox. Okay, so I could I could probably do one of those and get started pretty quickly with Docker. A little more of a hassle, though, right? I've got to deal with a container. Don't love that, but not a deal breaker, I would say, right? Let's Let's look at how I got to query this kind of quickly. So I can get something. Here's a tutorial about what's a graph. We're all familiar with that. Looks like a property graph here, right? Doesn't look like JSON or documents. Looks kind of like a property graph. Um, I, I, these look like properties on the relationship to me, not labels, but I'm, uh, whoopsie. I'm not really sure yet, so let's look at that a little bit longer. Um, again, they're describing what's an edge and a vertex. Looks fine. Uh, some CSV files, okay. Uh, shell script to see the database, that's fine. Dropping things. Um, all right, let's actually just do a query. Get 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 to a query to me for me. Um, I want to know how hard it is to get my data out. I don't want to run a rest a rest query. I want to run an actual. Okay, so this is a query again. It, it this is a very much a. Uh, a RESTful type query, right? Talk to my graph. I'm a nice social graph. I want a vertices. I want a person. I want that name of somebody to be Tom. Um, yeah, but I want, I don't want to, I want to see the actual query languages, which I'm not really seeing here. Um, here we go. So select uh, TGT from start. Uh, S, friendship E. So it looks like uh, the similar to Cypher, but the variable is going on the other side. So I'm guessing start is a label and friendship is and, and person. Um, it looks reasonable. Like I can, I, I can, I can deal with that. Um, and where are we here? Back in two. Ah, that's right. Here's what I look at this. Install a query. Words you don't normally hear spoken in the same sentence. What does that mean? Install query. So in Tiger Graph, and I have some familiarity with Tiger Graph, what I can see here is now I can't just write a query. I've got to like, write the query and then install it into the database. Uh, it takes a minute to install a query. What's this query click again? Uh, let's see. It looks pretty simple. I mean, I'm not I'm not an expert on like Tiger Graph queries, but there's not a lot here. Um, 
It's not a super complicated query. It takes a minute. Um, okay, so why? Uh, large data sets takes a many faster query. Take very many times different parameters. So it's going to generate machine instructions to REST endpoint. So what's really happening here? Uh, so they're, they've taken an approach uh, to really optimize for speed. And you, you write queries, and you install them into the database, and then they do some magic under the covers to translate that into uh, machine code and other interfaces uh, to make those queries really, really, really fast. Um, so I, I, have different, I, have, I, have, I have two minds to that. One, it's kind of cool. It's a cool idea. Um, I like the performance. But if I'm really interested in flexibility, um, that sounds tricky. So if, if I don't know what all of my queries are going into this, if I need to do some data exploration, if I need to poke around at the data a bunch, then um, I'm feeling a barrier to entry here, right? Uh, however, if I know the questions I want to ask, I'm not going to change them very often, but I need them to be really, really fast, this feels like it could be a really good approach to me. So, um, so that's that's interesting to me. Right? This is a, they're doing they're definitely doing some interesting things here, uh, and and I like that. I like the fact that they are sort of thinking about the graph a little bit differently, uh, and and sort of challenging maybe some of my uh, initial concepts and beliefs about graph. Uh, the offsides will take a quick peek at their uh, documentation. Uh, gets overview, tutorials. It's a decent amount of documentation, it seems like. Let's look at that community site really quickly. It is a community forum. Let's make that larger. Uh, so, well, the community. Um, it seems. Uh, activity, three days, 13 hours ago, days, days, days. Okay, so there's community. Uh, doesn't seem super active. Uh, 15 views, no replies to this within 13 hours. One reply, 26 views, 20 hours. Then we go into three days, three days. Um, so a uh, little, little concern maybe around the community. Um, I, don't, I don't know that it's as, maybe as vibrant as I would like uh, based on their own stats. I mean, even here, right, how many views of Welcome to the Community? Only 776. Like, it just doesn't seem like it's a huge developer community out there. So this feels, it's feeling a little niche to me. Uh, but that niche might be an important one for what I'm trying to do. Uh, again, tough to say. Um, where are we on our list? We're hitting up into an hour, and I don't want to go. Stardog, I know already that, that is a, uh, an RDF database, and it's, uh, uh, it is in uh, Java. So again, um, I'm taking a pass on, on that for my personal use. Quick peek at DGraph, so the last one for the day. Uh, Dgraph, again, pretty new. Um, I've heard some buzz about Dgraph. Uh, it is uh, open source. Uh, a number of supported languages. So GraphQL, uh, HTTP, GRBC. This, I don't love this. We, we should have a, probably a, a whole talk about GraphQL. Um, long story short right here now, GraphQL is definitely useful. Uh, it is not natively a graph query language, though. Uh, it, it is something else. Um, you you can kind of massage it into that, but it certainly wouldn't be my go-to. Um, gRPC using program buff, that, that's a Google's remote procedure calls, okay, or HTTP. So, not not sure about that. Replication via Raft. Okay, Raft is a relatively new. Um, um, a replication protocol coming out of the university space as well. That's kind of cool. Uh, let's take a quick peek at graph.io. Uh, 
Okay, so right off the bat, they're going after the GraphQL uh, uh, crowd, rather. So people who really, really want to do GraphQL. Um, and yeah, a lot of those are JavaScript people. So okay, fair enough. Um, there's a market there. I don't know that it's me, but there's a market there. Uh, single back and approach to database and development. Okay, I don't create your schema, deploy it. Okay, what? No code required. Uh, okay, maybe I like that. Import data from other places. Okay. Uh, they have their own Lambda thing. So Lambda is a concept. Well, I think it's being used, but like it was in uh, Amazon for a long time, sort of as uh, serverless sort of functions. Um, there are, of course, other meanings for Lambda. Uh, scale, what do customers say? Customers say good things, of course. Otherwise, you wouldn't post it on your website. Um, other cloud providers. So is DGraph cloud only? Uh, let's look at the product. Okay, so it's open source cloud and enterprise. Uh, so I can see here, this is the cloud, some sort of management interface. Okay, that seems reasonable enough. Uh, enterprise gives me encryption at rest and encrypted backups. That could be important. Multi-tenancy, that might be important. Uh, audit logging, that's certainly a good thing. Uh, world's most popular important graph database. Well, that's interesting. Um, uh, if you stop the sentence there, it's clearly not true because we just came from GraphDB and it's it's just not the world's most popular uh, graph database. That would be Neo for J. Um, maybe if you say with native GraphQL support, it becomes the most popular. Uh, wouldn't really know. Number one, again, I don't know how true that really is, um, but I'm also not that interested but you know what let's take a quick jump over there you seem to really want me to jump over to github uh github's not going to intrinsically lie to me let's go to dgraph okay they've got 16.9 thousand stars so that is a significant more than the other one we looked at watch more so it is more than the other one so that seems reasonable enough um there are no open issues so uh, my gut reaction on this is, is that I want to kind of call BS somewhere. No one, ha no one that has a lot of use has no open issues. Uh, oh, GitHub issue being deprecated. Reading is hard. So let me click on that and see what that is. Discuss issues. Okay. Interesting. So here's what they moved out of GitHub for whatever reason. Fine. Let's see their activity. Um, so very similar to what we saw out of, out of Tiger Graph in terms of this page. It looks like the same type of implementation almost exactly. So uh, about DGraph, 258 views. It's not a ton. Uh, a day ago, two days. Again, no replies. One reply, 11 days, 13. I'm not seeing a lot of community support again. Um, I'm seeing even less community support than I saw for Tiger. Um, so I don't, I don't love that DGraph. Um, you're packed with features. Custom logic with Lambdas, right? Your custom logic with JavaScript and your schema. Uh, okay. I guess that's fine. It's fine. Uh, JPG auth. Need a visual, they got a visualizer, that's fine. So show me, show me something about how this actually works under the covers, if you don't mind. If you don't mind, there we go. Uh, just real quick, I want to see, show me something uh, about how to just query, I don't, I'm not a SQL user. Okay, oh, it's a two-hour course. I don't want that. I don't want that. Get me out of there. Uh, give me the docs. There we go. So it's all GraphQL. Um, the graph back end. So show me a query. Show me a searching and a filtering. So yeah, it's all it's all GraphQL post queries. 
Yeah, um, I'm not. I'm not super excited. I mean, if you are really, really deeply invested in GraphQL, uh, this might provide a really nice um, uh, interface for that. I'm not, uh, and I'm feeling like we probably need to talk about GraphQL and and what it is and what it isn't in an upcoming episode. Um, but yeah, interesting. Probably not my go-to. Um, I, I would say the ones looked at definitely, obviously Neo for J. Um, if I can get, if I if I want to run an ad, on Azure, so maybe uh, Orient seemed interesting to me. Um, maybe Orango. Um, and obviously, there's a lot more on here. Maybe we'll, we'll pick a few others uh, at another time. But we're an hour in. Um, I really appreciate those of you who've hung out. Love the new followers. Definitely appreciate the support. Again, if you've got a particular database you want to see me look at or talk about, uh, or you don't like what I said here, you think something's crazy, uh, or you've got a new topic you want to hear about, uh, hit me up. Uh, C. Richie on, uh, on Twitter. Contact information at the closing here. Uh, graphguy.com. Uh, as well as uh, links everywhere. So I hope to see everyone uh, next week. I'll talk to you then. I'm Clark Ritchie, and I'm the Graph Guy.